So here we are in the middle of a snowstorm, a perfect day to test rugged all-wheel drive SUVs and we have minivans. Oh. But that's good because we love minivans. Yeah, it's a great day for a minivan throwdown too, right? Yeah. And we've got the Honda Odyssey and the Chrysler Pacifica. And I got to say, these are probably the two best minivans on the market uh, right now. Not that there's that many left, but we'll see which one is the best today. Let's give the Odyssey a try first, see All how right, it goes. Let's go. So here we are in the Honda Odyssey. This has a 3.5 liter V6, naturally aspirated, 280 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque, uh, 10 speed automatic transmission, pretty good on gas and feels pretty peppy when you put the foot down a little bit. I think that when you're moving this around, it really feels like it's got a nice low center of gravity, which is unusual for a minivan. So it actually stays pretty planted and pretty predictable in its handling. It's quite nice that way. Yeah, still you won't ever get enthusiastic about its no. uh, driving dynamics and it, it does feel really heavy. You can feel it really pushing side to side when you're making turns and stuff. If you want a minivan that's, you know what, the, mo the smallest amount of space to be able to handle three rows, it's not that anymore. That's not what minivans are anymore. They're maximum passenger and cargo capacity. Right, and not very easy to park relative to the Pacifica. I find it's, the cameras are both about the same. They're both fine, but I just find that, that trying to back this one up takes a little bit more sort of trial and error than the Pacifica does. Yeah, it's they both have a single like rear view, uh, although the, the Odyssey has multiple angles uh, and wider angles to try and see a little bit better. It's important to point out that with these two exact vehicles, we're not exactly comparing apples to apples. We've got quite different trims that we're working with. This, the Odyssey is a touring trim, which in this vehicle is the top trim. The Pacifica that we have is also a touring trim, but which that happens just a to be trim. a mid-grade in that, in that vehicle. But what we're looking at here in the Odyssey Odyssey is, uh, is the top level of, of features that are available and there's some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, and it's, it costs a pretty penny, right? It's about 52,000 mm. plus uh, some freight and PDI. So well over 50,000 once you add everything all up. Uh, but for that, you've got the full suite of driver aids. You've got adaptive cruise control. Mm. You've got lane keep assist. And I really like those systems. This one, it works well enough, uh, especially like the lane keep assist in the Hondas. I find it's, it's it works quite nicely. Heated and cooled seats here in the front, which that's my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. And it's got memory seats as well as it's got welcome seats. So it moves back a little when you're getting in and out. And I kind of appreciate that when I've got <laughs> bad back days. You do. I have short legs, so I have to like reach for the brake pedal to start the car when it pulls back on me, but I get it done. The Odyssey has Honda's latest and greatest infotainment system. And uh, this one is quite nice. It's got mm -hmm. these little icons. It's more uh, smartphone like. Yeah, it's like a smartphone. You can actually just press and hold one and then you can drag and drop between screens so it's on the first screen uh, and the response time is really good. One thing I should point out is that when I'm sitting in a car like this, I have short little T-Rex arms. I can't always reach the other side of the of the screen of the infotainment system without giving it a bit of a forward lean. On this one, not only can I do that, but the button layout on the music screen is such that I can tune stations without having to reach at all. all like the volume knob is here, but the adjustments are right here. For everything the Odyssey has going for it, we can't ignore the fact that in this segment, the minivan segment already is at a disadvantage of people not wanting to buy it just because it's not fashionable. And I find myself apologizing for this car. You have the same thing I do, right? We have rotating cars in our driveway every week and the mm -hmm. neighbors notice and they come around, they want to see the, the car show, right? I've got this one in my driveway this week. The neighbors come by and they're like, ooh. And I'm apologizing for it. I go, yeah, yeah, it's mom week. I feel like I have to apologize for the car and the appearance of it. And that's not, that's in this segment, that's a big problem. In my focus group community, actually, this is pretty seen pretty positively, right? Really? People are interested because quite a few of the hockey parents, they own minivans mm -hmm. themselves. Like one has a previous generation Odyssey. There's a couple Grand Caravans. Somebody else has a Pacifica. So right. it's something where these are pretty popular in that segment. When you're right. carrying around two, three, four kids uh, mm -hmm. and hockey bags and other sporting gear, I mean, these are simply the most practical solution. Absolutely. It's the easiest on the parents to a certain degree mm -hmm. uh, to get stuff in and out, to get the kids in and out, and to schlep around all the stuff that you have right. uh, without having to worry too much about moving stuff in and out uh, of a smaller vehicle or a crossover that ends up cramping your lifestyle. Pacifica blows it away, as far as I'm concerned, in terms of just outright pleasure of appearance. Yeah. Now let's go check out the Pacifica now. Well, I think we've said what we need to say about this.
so here we are in the Chrysler Pacifica, the 2020 model. I'll start off by saying something that we both prefer its looks. Uh, I, I always thought like yeah. they, they got it right with the Pacifica when they first came out. It looks sleek and modern. They did, but you know what they did? Oh, they redesigned it. They ah. redesigned it, and it's not as good. Not nearly as good. Yeah, the 2021's got a bit of a weird grill thing going on. I don't know about I that. I love but. on this, on the 2020, the, the curvature to the headlights versus the grill shape. It's so nice. The Pacifica's got also a V6 under the hood. It's 3.6 liters, and it makes 280 seven horsepower, but an identical 262 pound feet of torque. Once again, it's like they've put the engines in that serve the size of vehicles that these minivans have become. It's not better, but it's different. The steering is lighter. It feels like it's a little bit more responsive, even though they have the same turning radius, but this one's also a bit narrower. Uh, maybe the windows are a bit bigger, so there's more visibility. Mm -hmm. So you just feel like you're more in control and you've got the better idea of what's going on. So this seems like it would be a better city van, uh, whereas the other one might be a better uh, suburb or country van. It's been the case for a long time that when you're talking about FCA vans, you're talking about an advantage in interior space because there's that stow and go seating and you just can't beat it if you stow want to use. Stow and go is the best. The entire space in the back. Uncontested. Right. It's the passenger and cargo solution uh, that you would want uh, if there's times when you might need to convert to maximum cargo. <laughs> Those, the third row seats, you know, just on this one, they're not powered, you just tug a strap yep. and you fold them into the floor. Uh, and the second row, it's pretty common complicated to get it settled in, mm. but at least you still have those two outboard seats folded into the floor. You have to take out the middle section, uh, which is, you know, it, it's, it's a bit of a difficult job, but at the same time, if you decide be like, if you're going to do that frequently, just leave that, that thing out. Right. And you still have your seats in all three rows when you want to. Up front, the Pacifica comes out ahead for me. I just like you connect a little bit better. I do. Uh, it doesn't have any fixed buttons. It's all through the screen for the infotainment system. Both the Odyssey and the Pacifica come with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay as standard, so there's no difference there. We're also looking, again, at a mid-level trim here. So yeah, there are one... features that are available in the Pacifica that are not in this exact vehicle. This one only comes up to about 48000 in price uh, and there are higher trims that would then match the Odyssey feature for feature. To go to the top trim in the Pacifica you end up looking at over 55000 mm -hmm. with the uh, rear seat entertainment system. Which uh, is a great rear seat entertainment system with the two seat back screens. They run independently and they've got their own cool little apps and things but it's a $3,000 add-on at this trim level. It's not something that you're taking lightly. When you look at the fuel consumption numbers for the, the two vehicles they come out identical in combined 10.6 according to NRCAM, but our real world numbers are turning out to be quite different. Yeah, maybe it's just how we're driving them, but or where the we're Pacifica driving them. is showing 13.2 liters per hundred kilometers right now, and the Odyssey is at 11. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's surprising considering the Odyssey is quite a bit heavier, uh, but also it's a, a lot of it's about application of throttle yeah. uh, and driving environment. Uh, so perhaps we've been driving this a little bit more heavily uh, in stop and go traffic. It's, uh, it's hard to calculate exactly, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this one, if the typical real world number are a bit higher. Honda is right. usually quite good about living up to their fuel consumption numbers. Right. So for two vehicles that are so similar in their missions, there's a lot of subtle little differences that set them apart, which I found interesting today. There are, but when you get up to about the same spend, maybe a little bit different, but, but more or less the same neighborhood, you're getting a lot of the same features between both of these. Mm -hmm. So really it comes down to factors like the, the drive feel, which one you prefer, and the looks. And also what kind of practicality you need. Mm -hmm. uh, right, that second row stow and go yeah. is a big differentiator. For me, the Pacifica, I just liked a lot of the little small things. I liked that it felt more maneuverable. I like the infotainment system better and just kind of liked how it drive better and how it felt to get in it for the Pacifica. So despite it being a lower trim, uh, I was fine with that and I yeah. think it had everything it really needed and I like the value that it offers at a lower trim. Absolutely. So I was really happy with the Pacifica. It's the one I would take home and live with my family forever. No problem. Agreed. All right, signing off for driving.ca. I'm Jonathan Yarconi. And I'm Stephanie Walcraft. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Yep, and hit that bell to subscribe.